Father, we just want to thank you. Thank you for bringing us to the end of year 2022. We bless you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. May your name be May your name be highly exalted. Thank you, Jesus, the Son of the Living God. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful for many, many blessings. Spiritual blessings. Thank you for natural blessings. Thank you for grace. Thank you, Malibu. Shanti ki paraganama shanta ikaskopalia. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We ask that you help our heart to be full of thanksgiving and gratitude unto our God and even for his gifts and even unto men that you have used for us in time past and you are still using for us blessed be your name lord in jesus mighty name we are prayed amen hallelujah you are welcome to another episode on build up a life transforming moment with god's word thank you for joining thank you for watching uh, one thing I know about the Word of God is that if we stay with it, the Word of God will prosper in our life. I pray that God's Word will prosper in your life and in my life in Jesus' name. This is December 31st, 2022. So this is the end. Today marks the end of 365 days. What are you grateful to God for? Who are you grateful to? Um, what are you grateful for? There is gratitude for and there is gratitude to. Oftentimes, as human beings, we tend to express gratitude more for things than men. Let's start with Ephesians chapter 5 verse 20. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 20. Giving thanks always for all things unto God <laughs> and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So as I was saying earlier that naturally men tends to be more grateful for things than they are grateful to men they are we are more grateful for things than we are we are grateful you know to men and to god now gratitude or being grateful um is an attitude naturally all over the world gratitude or being grateful is an attitude. Life is a school. In the school of life, we have many lesson teachers. One of our lesson teachers in the school of life is patience. Patience is one of our lesson teachers in the school of life. We can see patience physically speaking. So, but uh, God, God injected patience you know, in, the, in, in certain processes. For instance, a woman needs to be carried baby for a maximum of nine months before delivery. No amount of prayer and fasting, no, no amount of speaking in tongues will make a woman, you know, give birth to a baby at, you know, a three-month-old baby or four-month-old. That becomes a premature one. So life is a school. In the school of life, we have many lessons to try. Patience is one of them. Although we have the spiritual aspect of patience too in Christ Jesus. Patience of the kingdom. I'm talking generally now. Another lesson teacher we have in life is called gratitude or thanksgiving. You know, in the formal formal wars of in formal wars of education or formal school setting, learners are taught the five golden uh, five golden words. Yes, five golden virtues, five golden attitudes, or the five magic words, whichever way, whichever case it may be called, or whichever way it may be called. So one of it is to learn how to say thank you. We say pardon me, we say pardon, we say please, I am sorry. So thank you is one of the five golden words 
or magic world that even in nature learners are taught so generally when somebody does something for you nature demands that you should you should be grateful to them for what they have done all right so the question this morning is who are you grateful to and what are you grateful for are you sure that what you are grateful for is not more than who you are grateful to we are grateful for things we are grateful to men and we are grateful to god and to men so we have to overcome the temptation to be more grateful for things than for god who made the things available and than uh, than for men who also made it available so we thank god for things we must thank god for god and we must also thank god for we must thank god for the gift of men as well now as regarding gratitude there is no small thing that is there is nothing there's nothing too small to be grateful to god for there's no small thanks given no matter how small it is even if it is so small as as a mustard seed or is so small as a widow's mind everyone recognize it in the realm of the spirit no small gratitude nothing is too small to be grateful to god for and nothing is too big to be grateful to god for it's all about the heart uh, gratefulness or gratitude works in two ways um we have things that have breath and we have things that have life and breath not everything that has life or not everything that has breath has life but everything that has life definitely has breath so there is a thanksgiving go on to harvest or attitude of gratitude go on to harvest from things that have breath animal have breath but they don't have life when i mean life the life of christ in a man so anybody who does not have jesus that person does not have the life of God. That person only has the bread that Creator gives to all his creatures. So there's thanksgiving God wants to get from things that have bread. There's also thanksgiving God wants to get from things that have life. So things that have life, Christians, people who belong to God, we have life. So when a thing has life, definitely to have bread. But not everything that has bread does not have life. But everything that has life has bread. All right, so let's start with everything that has bread. I've said that one earlier, that gratitude for all things that have bread is um, is an attitude that nature expects that when we practice it, it makes blessings to flow. It, it creates peace in our environment. It shows to people that we appreciate the effort that they put or they invested into making things up, you know, to happen for us. I pray that God will deliver us from the spirit of ingratitude, especially the one that is ravaging in this perilous time. So we've read Ephesians 5 verse 20 that we should give thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to focus more on thanksgiving as the will of God for those of us who have breath, who have life. And bread. So we have to thank God, thank men for everything. But for us as Christians, gratitude or gratefulness is not just an attitude, it's a great attitude. Gratefulness, gratitude for those of us who are Christians, who have the life of God in us, is not just an attitude that is general to every human being. For us, it is a great attitude. And the reason why gratefulness is a great attitude for christian is because the will of god is attached to it the will of god is at stake without it the will of god is attached to it. let's read first thessalonians thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18. first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18. first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18 says that in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So this kind of thanksgiving is only those who have life inside them that can 
offer it to the Lord. So, thanks, thanksgiving is a prayer. Thanksgiving is a song. Thanksgiving is a commandment. Thanksgiving is uh, a forever thing. It's what is what we do from death till we leave this world. Then much more after resurrection, when we meet Christ in glory, in the world to come, it continues. But let's look at. Um, so we said Thanksgiving is a forever thing. Let's look at Psalm seventy-nine verse thirteen before we come back to First Thessalonians. Psalm 79, verse 13. Lord, we are grateful. Thank you for all that you did. We are so grateful. Thank you for the protection. Psalm 79, verses 13. 79, 13. Says, so, so we thy people and sheep of your pasture will give thee thanks forever. So that is, we, we that are God's people and people, sheep of his pasture, we will give thanks. This is a great attitude, not a natural attitude, forever. So thanksgiving is a forever thing. So it continues. It, till death, after death, it continues. All right. So for us as a Christian, that thanksgiving is a great attitude. Far above the general attitude that thanksgiving is known to be with all its blessings. If natural thanksgiving is so powerful, then imagine it spiritually. Imagine it in Christ, where God has poured all of himself for us in Christ. So let's go back to that first Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. That in everything we should give thanks. This is the will of God for us in Christ Jesus. So where I'm going today. So we need to be grateful to everyone who has been of help to us this year. We have to say thank you to them, uh, our friends, our pastors, people that are not also Christians who are, you know, maybe our colleagues at work. They've been of help to us, our bosses. We need to appreciate them. Everyone who has, uh, who has been of help in time, in turbulent times, even this year, we need to say thank you to them. Yeah, our words goes a long way in appreciating people to let them know that we are sincerely grateful for all that God gave them grace to do because no man can give anything, no man can offer any help if God did not allow it or if God has not given them grace, regardless of religions to say. So generally, we have to be grateful for things that we have received. We must be thankful to God for protection, for sound health, for freedom from sin, uh, victory over Satan, dominion over evil spirits, then I believe we, we need to thank God for growth as well, you know, uh, the renewing of our mind, you know, the way we were thinking in January, it must have changed by December, <laughs> you know, by the virtue of God pouring grace on his word, the revelation shoots out from God's word, then it transforms our heart. So for us as Christians, where I'm going, Thanksgiving is God's will. So it's in New Testament. Thanksgiving is attached to the will of God. So let's go to Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7. That's the last scripture we'll read. Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7. Let's look at verses 12. Revelation chapter 7, verses 12. Revelation 7, verses 12. Revelation 7. So I'm going to read Revelation 7 verse 12. Saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be all to our God forever and ever. Now, the thanksgiving here, 1 Thessalonians 5 18 says that uh, in everything we should give thanks. Because it is the will of God for us in Christ Jesus. So why is thanksgiving for us as Christians a great attitude? Uh, because it is connected to the will of God. All right. So what makes thanksgiving powerful in the New Testament is because it is connected to the will of God. And the will of God flows down from the throne of God. The will of God Flows down from the throne of God. In Revelation chapter 7, verse 12, we read, We saw seven pillars. 
that sustain the throne of God. Seven pillars that sustain the throne of God. And these seven pillars, the essence of uh, the essence of their establishment is for salvation. So thanksgiving is the will of God for us in Christ Jesus because of salvation. And salvation is what the throne of God represents for us as Christians. So here, Revelation chapter 7, verse 12. Uh, John was speaking by the revelation he received that these seven pillars, they are connected to the throne of God. So in other words, thanksgiving is one of the ingredients that makes God perfect. One of the, God is a perfect God. He stays in the realm of perfection. So one of the ingredients that makes God a perfect being is thanksgiving. And thanksgiving is one of the seven pillars that sustain or on which the throne of God is established. So thanksgiving is one of the things that perfect the throne of God. Hallelujah. So if you read proud to that and if you read downward, it was talking about the twelve tribes, the twelve tribes of Israel. So let's jump to verse uh, verse 15. Verse 15. Therefore, are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple? And he that sitteth upon the throne shall dwell among them. So all those seven pillars mentioned in Revelation chapter 7 verse 12, they are product of Amen. They are product of Amen. So Jesus is yes. God is Amen. Jesus is our yes. God is our Amen. Amen means it is sealed. It is settled. It is perfected. It cannot be torn anymore. Yeah, yeah. So it has been sealed forever and ever. God is our Amen. Jesus is our Yes. For the promises of God for us in Christ Jesus, they are Yes and they are Amen. Christ is our Yes. God is our Amen. Hallelujah. So Thanksgiving is what makes one of the things that make God perfect. Thanksgiving is one of the pillars, the foundation that Christianity is laid upon. When Jesus Christ wanted to die, the Passover night, he broke the bread and gave thanks. So the New Testament was also established on Thanksgiving. So we should be grateful to God this time, for God, for Jesus, for the spiritual blessings we have enjoyed, and to be grateful to men as well who has been of help to us. So in this season, as we wrap up the year, send a message to somebody, a wire email to someone, give somebody a call, tell them you appreciate them, uh, tell them you cherish them, and for all that God gives them for in this year, 2022. As we as we embrace the attitude of change, we will go naturally and spiritually for us as Christians, so we enjoy knowledge because thanksgiving is the language of faith. Thanksgiving is also the language of faith. In everything, if you give thanks to God, whether it's good, it's bad, it's convenient, it's not convenient, because we know that all things are working together for our good. We bless God for this year, for bringing us to the end of the, of the year. May the name of the Lord be glorified. We are grateful for all that God has done. Father, we thank you for seeing us through this year, 2023. Father, we are grateful, we are grateful. We ask, oh God, that you help us to be more grateful even than ever before. Open our eyes, oh God, the eyes of our understanding, to even know what to thank you for, and to also appreciate men from a sincere heart. Father, we thank you for all you did this year. We lift up our hands to you in holy adoration. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for everything. Thank you for everyone. Thank you for the gift of men. Thank you for your angelic ministration to us all through this year. We are so grateful. May your name be glorified. We receive more grace to be to be candidate of thanksgiving help us to be great in thanksgiving because your will is connected to you father we bless you we give you all the glory thank you jesus 
May your name be glorified. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us. So as we move into the new year, so move into the new year in the spirit and with the spirit of thanksgiving. Thank you for joining all through this year. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and show you peace in the name of Jesus. So we'll meet again by God's grace next year. Happy New Year in advance. By God's grace next year, remember to keep yourself in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the love of God, and keep fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. The part of the just is as a shining light, it will shine brighter and brighter, even until the perfect day. Happy New Year in advance. God bless you. Shalom.